Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Learning with Washington University. This is Module 5, Classification and Regression. Part 2, Multi-Class Classification. Now we're going to see exactly how we perform a multi-class classification. We've somewhat already seen this with the IRIS data set, at least as a brief introduction. But now I'm going to show you how to do it with um, basically how you can evaluate it and how it differs from binary class classification. So here we are creating a very simple uh, neural network for the classification. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger so that it conforms to the, uh, to the others. But we are essentially setting up a, a classification problem. We're loading the IRIS data set reading CSV, we're separating, we're creating a text index for the species. So each of those three iris species that you, that you have, you're going to have 0, 1, 2. And we're going to break it into the X and Y so that we have the species as what we're trying to predict. And we will split it into the 70, 25, 75, 25 split. We set this up for softmax and categorical cross entropy, so this is definitely classification. This, since we are since we are telling it to early stop, we have the we are going to use a model checkpoint. So what this does is it basically, and we it's it's on all the previous early stopping examples, but just to explain what this is doing, we are creating so early stopping basically specifies a patience. So it's going to start to loop through and do the iterations, train, 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 train. It's going to keep the validation set separately. So as it trains, it keeps, it trains one epoch, then it looks at the validation set and says, okay, has the error improved? If the error has not improved for five times, it stops. Well, you would really like the neural network that occurred right when the error first didn't improve for the first for the first time. You want the neural network that throughout this whole run of training, because you might have a much bigger patience, you might put 50 in there. And by the time it ends at that 50, it might have already increased the, the validation error a lot. You would like to have the neural network that has the lowest possible validation error. So this does that, the model checkpoint, it's going to store it into this file. We have to store it into a file. That's the way Keras works. And we're only going to save the best. If we didn't put that in and made it false, it would save the weights for every single, uh, every single epoch. We make sure that this checkpointer is called. And then when, when the fitting ends, we now have the weights for when we had reached that, we reached the end of our patients and had stopped training. We would like the one that had the best weights. So we do that here. We load that one that, that does in fact have the, the best weights. And then we can, um, we can be assured that we're using the best model that was available during that training run. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, that did not take very long at all. And this best weights file, this does, this does exist on your computer. I, I deleted it earlier there, but that was from a previous session. If we do an LS, we'll, we'll see it. It's right here. It's the best, the best weights. Okay. So we're going to evaluate this with, we've seen that we can evaluate this with accuracy, but now let's evaluate it graphically. You could use the exact same accuracy code that you that you previously worked with, but evaluating this for a confusion matrix looks like this. Remember we had the confusion matrix earlier before with the binary, and you had just a two by two. Now you have a three by three. So you have a n by n, where n is the number of classes that you have. And just like the two by two, you want to make sh you can evaluate a strong network by noticing a very strong diagonal. The diagonal, this just simply tells you that 
The predicted label is Iris Setosa, and it really was Iris Setosa. The predicted was Iris Versicolor, and it really was Iris Versicolor. Irigenica really was. There are some case, actually, this trained perfectly, so which is not unusual for this simple of a data set. You can see 15, 11, 12, and there's all zeros in the other. This is a perfectly trained neural network and normalized 100%, 100%, and 100%. So that is essentially showing you the, um, uh, the, the confusion matrix. Let's take a look at how that is actually drawn. So plotting of the confusion matrix occurs here. What you do is you basically you create a plot, give it the title, um, you create its color bar, and the tick marks, that is going to be the length of names. So for iris, we have one, two, three, so it'll be three tick marks. And we put the tick marks onto the, onto the, onto the chart, and we put the Y tick marks onto the chart. They're both the same. For X and Y, they're, they're for a confusion matrix, they're just the um, they're the same labels on the X and Y. And then we plot the true label and the predicted label. The actual plotting comes from here. Uh, the CM that we're passing in, which is the confusion matrix, which was generated outside. But this, this is creating what's really called a heat map. The confusion matrix has, the, has a, a checkerboard. And the, the values in that checkerboard that have the highest value will have the darkest color. And the color map is just the blues. And that checkerboard then, the heat map, tells us which, uh, which classes are being correctly classified and then mistaken for each other. So keep that in mind. When you are looking for a chart or graphic to help you visualize uh, classification problems, the confusion matrix is, is typically a very good choice for that. And they're very easy to render and pretty well understood in the, in the data science community. All right, that is the end of part two. In part three, we're going to look more closely at regression neural networks.